When injury takes you out of the game, it's time for your team to step up. At Alina Health Orthopedics, you'll get expert care backed by a whole health system of providers. With records, test results, and care team, you are always close to the care you need. Schedule now at alinahealth.org slash ortho. everybody welcome back to sound of the loons yet another podcast here presented by alina health orthopedics and today we get the special pleasure of being joined by mark watson and this is a special occasion mark because you guys have a fantastic new signing on the verge here um i mean technically i think when you and i are doing this i'm not sure if it's officially been announced but we know it's it's happening so we get kind of get to get the inside scoop on the podcast before we release this but sang bin jong is a young South Korean attacking player that I know you guys have had your sights on for a while. There's been rumors and, and conversations heading into this official signing. And I know, I believe he's in Minnesota officially. So first of all, what, what can you tell us about this young, exciting player and why is he a young, exciting player that you guys have been after for quite some time? Yeah. I mean, we, we are excited. Um, we think we've got a really, really talented player here. Um, you know, this, this has been going on for quite a while. Um, you know, we, we see the Korean market as, as a really interesting market. Um, it's not untapped by any sense of the word because there's, there's some real high, high level players playing around the world. Um, they have a strong national team as well. So we, we, we've been you know working for a couple of years in terms of, uh, having a better understanding of the market and, you know, figuring out the viability of, of signing players because, you know, there's, there there's a lot of talent there. They have an incredible men- mentality and work rate. Uh, and we've always thought that they would translate really well to MLS. So this has been, you know, a fairly long journey in terms of getting to understand the market, um, some of the challenges to to signing players, um, and just just getting a really good feel for the for the player pool. So uh we've been looking for this type of position, this type of player for a while. Uh, to be quite honest with you, Sangbin was at the top of our list. But he went to to Wolves in the Premier League um, last last January, so you know we we figured he was gone. Um, you know, fortunately for us, he couldn't get a work permit. He didn't qualify due to the, the system they have for obtaining work permits. So we did go down the the line with some other players, and um, you know we find ourselves with him kind of circling back after him not being able to get his work put, permit, and he was available. So in the end, we we got the player we wanted. Um, we think he's got an incredible talent level for only 20 years old. Uh, and the one thing I think that sets him above the rest and the, the other players we've looked at, he's got really elite athletic, athleticism and speed. So uh, can play multiple positions, you know, but has, has incredible speed to get, get him behind, you know, from whatever position he's starting at. So when you talk about the kind of researching and doing the research, and you just said he's been with the wolf with wolves, um, in the English Premier League, but when you talk about that market in the Korean market, and you have talked to us at length before about scouts you have in different areas of the world, the South American connections, you know, going into how how different is it? And when you say you have to kind of do your homework on that that market, how different is it when you're going South Africa? I mean, we talk about Bongi, and of course. Um, Sangbin is a U22 initiative, much like Bangagukle Hwangwani, which is always a nice ad too. But <laughs> how different is it when each market you have to kind of do your research and your homework on the the connections and and trying to establish those relationships? Yeah, I mean it's it's challenging and it takes time. You know, I think a lot of people think you know you're looking for this type of player. You just go online and there's a list of 20 players and just pick the one you want and go sign them. It couldn't be further from the truth. So. You have to be very intentional on, you know, what you want to do, um, where you want to scout, you know, yeah, it's, it comes down to, to resources as well. Um, you know, we've identified the two big markets as, as most clubs would in terms of Europe and South America, but we think there's a bunch of other markets that, you know, there's, a, there's quality players, 
Um, there's maybe better value for money potentially. Um, but saying that when you do identify these markets, you have to have a real plan in terms of going there and finding the best players, making contacts, you know, establishing a network and then figuring out how you, how you can ultimately sign the player. And it's, it's not as easy as you think, um, you know, working with, uh, South Korean players and South Korean agents and clubs, you know, there's a big focus on playing in Europe. You know, when you look at Hyung Ming Sun, who's gone to Tottenham, and there's there's been a lot of other um, Korean players that have done well in Europe. That's that really is their first choice. So you're kind of working through through some of the um, you know the cultural norms. Um, you know, and we are now seen as a a really uh, really good place to come play and develop. You know, but we're still struggling to compete with the top European leagues. Uh, at least with the perception wise. And that's very much how things are done in Korea. So it took a lot of work, um, but I think it's a huge, huge signing, not just because we think we've got a good player, but this is the 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 only Korean player in MLS. And, you know, they, meaning, you know, the player and the agents, they think this is a really, um, a really important and uh, big step for the player. And they see MLS as a huge stepping stone to, to then go on to some bigger leagues and bigger clubs. You just mentioned his versatility. He's 20 years old now. I think he turns 21 on April 1st is what I read. So such a young player still. Um, but coming with the experience that he has playing for the South Korean national team that and the younger youth levels, U-17s, U-23s. But how do you see him fitting into this? You have this versatility already in attacking pieces with sort of dynamic. Luis is different than Bender. Bongi's different than, um, than Fragapane. Robin can kind of play all over the place. You've got some incredible central midfielders right now in Hassani and Will and Robin also, Curvin. How do you see him fitting into this and where can he add to what you already have in that attacking and those attacking spaces? Well, yeah, you, you mentioned the word um, versatility, and I think he that kind of sums him up. I think I think he can play in any of the underneath attacking positions. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say he's a nine, but although I I think he would have the qualities to do that. But I think he can play in any of those underneath spots. So either the wide positions or as a you know a ten or a second striker. Um, the one thing we we do know is that he's really quick, and knowing that you you know you're going to have to have space for him to run in behind. So. You know, wherever he starts and gets the ball or is combining, you know, he's he's going to be able to use his speed, and that's that's getting him behind the the defenses. So um, he's played a lot wide left, coming inside on his right foot. Um, but we also think he could be really effective playing off a striker. When you talk about um, the market and and the conversations with the agents, and now what this he's the only active current player in MLS from South Korea. What was his intrigue in coming here? How does that conversation go? When you maybe make the first contact with the agent, the agent goes to the player, however that went down, What was what's his intrigue and interest in coming here for this different challenge for him? Yeah, I think it depends on player to player. We've gone down the path with a lot of players. Some know a lot about the league and are very interested. I think they they follow the league and they they do realize that this is a an incredible opportunity to come and develop uh, enjoy playing, enjoy living in the country where you're at, um, and it being a real um, viable stepping stone to keep keep developing. So, um, you know, I wouldn't say it took a lot of convincing, but you're talking about that scenario and, you know, why should the player come? When you look at MLS over the past two or three years, the the number of players that have moved on to big clubs and for big money is pretty impressive. So, we you know, we we work collectively as a league sometimes in terms of, you know, we're obviously, you know, trying to get a player for Minnesota, but we use the league and all the players that are, are coming through and going to big clubs as, um, as a real validation of where we're at right now. So it didn't take a lot of convincing, but you know, you're, you're basically trying to uh, explain why this is a, this is a great opportunity and it's just as good as being at a bunch of different clubs in Europe for their development. Does it make it more challenging More challenging that there aren't a lot of South Korean players that have come to this league in general, but also no, none currently? Because we talk about Argentinians and South Americans, and we've talked, I was just talking to Gio Savarese last week about their Colombian connection. You mm -hmm. know, when you have other players that they can reach out to and say, hey, 
I'm thinking about coming. Is this a good choice? What, what's, what's the experience been like for you? The fact that, that, you know, is it a harder sell or is it not? And this could be the first guy that's in or that first, but the current guy that's in there and other players from South Korea reach out to him and say, what was your experience like when you, there isn't anybody currently that he can talk to? Yeah. So it's all of the above. Um, you know, there's, there's a short history of Koreans in the league. Most of them were a little bit older, like, you know, top players, top national team players that came to play here for a couple of years. I think in boom, who was at Vancouver for a couple of years was the only kind of young, talented kind of U 21 player um, that has come into the league developed and then gone on to a, a big league in Europe. So I think it's, I think it's part of that. And one thing the player was really interested in was the, the, the pioneer aspect of this, this deal. I think he liked the fact there hadn't been that many players. Um, although he knew that Inboom would come here and done really, really well. He was excited at that opportunity. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't daunting to him in terms of, well, there hasn't been many Kore uh, Koreans in the league and I'm, you know, I don't know what to expect. I think the fact that um, Inboom would come here and he sees players from all over the world coming here, different cultures, different languages, them settling, you know, adjusting to the the, the style of play here and then excelling and, and moving on. I think, I think just that template in general was really attractive to him. And he was excited about, like I said, being a, being a pioneer and being one of the first Korean players to come play in the league. Yeah. I mean, you said it and the, the couple more recent ones you just talked about um, in bomb, but we also have Kim Ki who was with Seattle 2018, 2019 mm -hmm. and Kim Moon Wan with LAFC from 2021 to 2022, but just a handful of players. So he is truly mm -hmm. going to be one of the very few that have been in this league and the only current player in this league. When you look at all as well, do you expect this group? You guys are off to a really great start, Minnesota United, coming off a big right. win in Colorado on the road, which we all know is a difficult place to play and get a result. You've got some guys mm -hmm. going away now for international duty, which is a blessing and a curse that you have these guys that are getting called away because of their quality, but also you got to play a little bit shorthanded. So mm -hmm. when you get a player like this, is it um, – is it, you know, you just want to get goals from any place they'll come from and he can contribute to that? Do you, do you see him more as a goal scorer, as a goal, contrib you know, contribution from a an assist man or all of the above? I think he can do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, his his main year playing professional soccer, which was he was 18 years old playing for Sioux on Blue Rings, Blue Wings, excuse me. I think he scored nine goals and that's a really good return. He hasn't had a run of games since then. And like I said, Went to Wolves, couldn't get a work permit. Uh, so it ended up not playing for them. Did a little bit of time with Grasshoppers on loan, which is a um, owned by the same ownership group as Wolves. So um, we see this as his second full season in professional soccer. And he's already shown that he can score goals. He can he can make assists. Um, you know, he can play different areas. And I think just how dynamic he is, I think he can be successful in any position. So we see that as... You know, ultimately, it's Adrian's decision how he wants to play him and, and how we feel he'll be, he'll be a complementary piece to our group. Uh, but I think the fact he is so versatile, it gives the coach a lot of options. How do you see um, him fitting in in the group so far? I know he's been in and around the team for maybe just a couple of days because the team was gone in, in Colorado. And I know he's just trying to get his feet under him a little bit and get settled. But um, and I know, I think I read a quote, it was either you or Adrian saying, it's on the coaching staff now, right? To make sure they we integrate him and we find how we can utilize him best, how, what best suits him as well as best suits the team. So how yeah. have you seen that going in just a handful of days go gone on so far? Yeah, so I, I will say this. It's been, a, it's been a real collective effort from the club. You know, and we want to make sure that when players come in, we're doing everything we can to onboard them, assimilate them, have them adjust to you know, not just the soccer side of it, but the the cultural side, the food, it's, you know, it's a big deal coming from a different country and you don't, you don't know anything, especially when there's a big language gap. So, um, you know, he's been here four or five days. He's been incredible. He's a, he's a really um, charismatic kid. He tells me he doesn't understand any English or speak English, but he said, he told me that in English. So he's, um he's a smart kid. I think he has a really good understanding of the language. And the few times I've kind of caught him out, he actually does speak really good English. So he knows that's a big part of his um, his adjustment here. And so he he will he will take English lessons. Uh, but at this current point in time, he has a full time translator. So we're 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 doing a really good job with the onboarding. Like I said, it was club wide. It was 
everyone sitting down and um, you know, figuring out what's what's the best situation. Can we can we make it as comfortable as possible so he doesn't have anything to worry about other than coming and playing and and helping the team win games. So um, yeah, we think we've done a really good job and we'll continue to do that as he as he you know assimilates and learns the language and understands the coach. Um you know, we will we'll continue to kind of phase that out. But it was really important to us that we we handled that aspect, you know, in a real professional way. Well, I'm excited to see him on the pitch and see what he can contribute whenever that might be, whenever he's fit and ready to go and available for you guys. And is this it for you guys? Is this it for, for this window, for this? I mean, are we going to see any more action for you guys or do you feel pretty good about where you're at? Like I said, you guys are flying high right now and getting some good results. Yeah, no, we, we like the group, um, you know, we think uh, we think it's a strong group. Uh, I think the goals will come from multiple places. Um, you know, we will we'll have our depth tested this weekend because there'll be a lot of a lot of players out. But it really is a next man up mentality. I think I think every week you go into the game. This is our group, and we're going to do the best with this group. You know, and that will be tested this weekend. But uh, I think we've shown that you know through some different levels of adversity, we've we've done really well uh, in terms of adding new players. We have until April twenty fourth. You know, we're always looking to get better. So if something, if something, uh, you know, drops on our plate that we think can help the help the team get better, we'll certainly look at it. Awesome. Well, thanks, Wado. Appreciate you taking the time and uh, enjoy that uh, winter wonderland you guys still have up there. It was it was sunny today and probably a balmy thirty eight, maybe. I'm telling so you, that is that is that, a, that is an absolute heat wave. I'm sure there was people with the top downs on the convertible. You know, I've got. I was just telling you, I'm on spring break right now with my daughter in Arizona. And I mean, people got their pea coats and their parkas on and it's like 72, but it's cloudy. So they're struggling here. So no, not here. I have shorts and flip flops on. <laughs> you can't see it from the top end. This is, I like this it. is a summer today. Yeah. Yeah. It's a business on the top party on the bottom look for you today. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Wado. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Kendra. Always a pleasure. See ya.